In 1898, three years after Thomas Edison obtained a patent for a movie camera, the Spanish-American War broke out. Edison dispatched camera crews to Florida and Cuba, and thus, the war movie was born. Cuba wanted independence, and we wanted the Spanish to go back to Spain. So we deployed the battleship Maine to Havana Harbor, just to keep an eye on things. It blew up and sank on February 15, 1898. At the time, no one really knew what caused the blast, but it was quite convenient to blame it on the Spanish. Edison dispatched one of his best cameramen, William Paley, to Cuba to get some footage of the demolished battleship. What he filmed from a moving barge was a pile of rubble scarcely recognizable as any type of vessel. Paley was then dispatched to Key West to film the funeral procession of nine of the victims of the main disaster. When Paley's films made it back to Edison's New Jersey headquarters, prints were made and shown at vaudeville houses and music halls. These films of actual events were very popular with the public and were the precursors to what became the newsreel industry. No one was around to record the Maine's actual demise, but that didn't stop early filmmakers from reenacting the scene in tanks and bathtubs. Remember the Maine became the battle cry as newspaper moguls the likes of William Randolph Hearst and Joseph Pulitzer called for war. President McKinley and Congress eventually complied and war was declared on April 25, 1898. A young assistant secretary of the Navy named Theodore Roosevelt wasn't about to sit behind a desk when he could put on a jaunty hat and get into the action. He resigned his government job and began to organize a volunteer force that became known as the Rough Riders. Here is a famous photo of the future president with his fellow fighters gathered around him. We will come back to this photo later. Wait a minute. Is that John Wayne next to Roosevelt? Nah. This scene of Spanish soldiers lining up Cuban rebels for the execution was one of the ways anti-Spanish sentiment was kept at a fever pitch in the U.S. What? You think it looks staged? Well, of course it was. It was shot in New Jersey, and members of that state's National Guard were perhaps the film industry's first extras. After war was declared, troops from all across the United States were dispatched to staging areas in Florida. Many who fought were veterans of battles with Native Americans out west, including this contingent of African Americans arriving in Tampa by boat. They were known as Buffalo Soldiers a nickname given to them by the Cheyenne, not just because of their skin color, but also out of respect for their bravery and toughness. Buffalo soldiers played a crucial role in the Spanish-American War. While the soldiers waited for their marching orders in Tampa, getting acquainted became an opportunity for amusement at the expense of the newest recruits. Once again, William Paley was there to film it. On June 22, 1898, the first U.S. troops landed in Cuba at the port of Daiquiri, and Bill Paley was again behind the camera to record their arrival. Nine days later would be the crucial Battle of San Juan Hill. The ambitious 39-year-old government worker who organized the Rough Riders became what we today would call a media darling, attracting the attention of both the newspapers and the brand new medium of film. In a little over three years, he became governor of New York, then U.S. vice president, and finally president when McKinley was assassinated in September of 1901. Teddy Roosevelt was the one we all learned about in school, the one who led the Rough Riders and captured San Juan Hill. But that wasn't the whole story. Here is a version of the story that did not make the newspapers. On July 1, 1898, the regular army and Roosevelt's volunteers were taking heavy fire from Spanish guns when First Lieutenant Gary Ord of Michigan was given command of the Buffalo Soldiers of the 10th Cavalry. Their orders were to provide support for the embattled American soldiers up the hill. Nearby was the 25th Infantry, another contingent of African Americans, who were pinned down by Spanish gunfire and out of view. When Ord gave the command for the 10th Cavalry to charge, the foot soldiers of the 25th Infantry, who were not under Ord's command, spontaneously joined their comrades and rushed into the fray. The hill was taken and the tide of battle was turned, but Ord was killed just as he reached the summit and never did get the recognition he deserved, nor did the Buffalo soldiers under his command. 
Here again is the picture of Roosevelt and his men. Now that we know the rest of the story, we can show the rest of the picture. Notice the black soldier at the far right. He and his comrades never appeared in any newspaper. Here is a better shot of the Buffalo Soldiers with the caption, Some of our brave colored boys who helped free Cuba. To finish our discussion of the relationship between war and the movies, here is one more project that Edison and his filmmakers undertook, a little gem called Love and War. They filmed four scenarios, parting, fighting, convalescing, where he is cared for by a Red Cross nurse with whom he falls in love, and returning with the girl of his dreams. The story itself was not that original, but the way it was designed was. It was the first movie musical. For each of the four scenarios, Edison's producer chose a song that was to be played while the film footage was projected. After exhaustive research, I have located much of the original film and the music that went with it. So here, for your viewing pleasure, is a presentation that has not been seen since 1899. have brought us fame for some tis known from whence we came where'er we go they've read the name of gary owen and glory instead of spa we'll drink pale nail and pay the reckoning on the nail no the night that our black was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet away weeping sigh Oh, oh, oh.